Jimmy Carter was a Baptist, an engineer, and a peanut farmer. James Earl Jimmy Carter Jr., the 39th President of the United States, was born in Plains, Georgia on October 1, 1924. His father, Earl, ran a peanut farm and warehouse. His mother shaped him, Miss Lillian. Call her a liberal, if you will. They were Democrats. The church had a lot to do with your life. It wasn't just church on Sunday. It was really believing in Christianity. Carter graduated from Plains High School in 1941, and in 1943, he was accepted into the U.S. Naval Academy. During summer breaks, he dated childhood friend Rosalind Smith. President Carter graduated from the Naval Academy in uh, 1946. That same summer, Jimmy and Rosalind Carter were married. The couple has four children. Between 1946 and 1952, Carter served aboard battleships and submarines, and he rose through the ranks from ensign to lieutenant. In 1952, he was handpicked by Admiral Hyman Rickover to help develop America's nuclear submarine fleet. He did very well. But his father died, and someone had to take care of the peanut business, so he resigned from the Navy. Carter returned to Plains and later began his career in public office, winning a seat on the school board in 1955. He was elected to the Georgia Senate in 1962. He ran for governor, and he didn't make it. Then he ran for governor again, and he was elected governor. In August 1974, President Richard Nixon resigned in the wake of the Watergate scandal. That same year, Jimmy Carter, who was still serving his first term as governor of Georgia, announced he was running for president. Carter campaigned on not being the disgraced Richard Nixon, saying, I will never lie to you. I'm a moral man. I'm a Christian. Carter became the Democratic presidential nominee, and on November 2nd, 1976, he narrowly beat incumbent Gerald Ford. His administration faced significant challenges early on. Double-digit inflation, high interest rates, the economy was really in very, very bad shape. He recognized early that we had a significant energy problem in this country. The public wasn't ready to hear it. Carter struggled with domestic issues, but it was international issues that defined his presidency. His signal foreign policy accomplishment was shepherding the peace treaty between Israel and Egypt. For the Camp David Accords, Begin and Sadat got the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, surprisingly, Jimmy Carter did not. And then on the 4th of November, 1979, Ayatollah Khomeini and his people seized the American embassy in Tehran, Iran. 66 diplomats and embassy employees were captured. One month later, the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan. Carter responded by boycotting the 1980 Summer Olympic Games in Moscow. And there were tears in his eyes as he looked out and he said, the Olympics coming up in Moscow, you're not gonna go, and his voice caught. Unable to free the hostages through diplomacy, Carter approved a military option. In April 1980, six helicopters carrying special forces attempted a rescue mission. One helicopter in that transport plane collided burst into flames. So not only were the hostages not rescued, but we lost some of our people trying. And that one event damned his presidency. He was powerless. In November 1980, Jimmy Carter lost his re-election bid to Ronald Reagan. On January 21st, 1981, after 444 days in captivity, and after Reagan was sworn in as president, Iran freed the hostages. Carter flew to Germany to greet them. Jimmy Carter has had one of the most successful post-presidential terms of any president that I can remember. He developed the Carter Center to help resolve conflicts without warfare. He has helped supervise elections all over the world. He helped cure something called river blindness in Africa. In 2002, Carter won the Nobel Peace Prize for a lifetime of working to promote human rights and democracy. Each year, he and Rosalind build homes with Habitat for Humanity, and he has authored several books. That's Jimmy Carter. No grass is going to grow under him until he dies.